For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna to discuss his column titled, What Do We Do When Estuar Liberators Become Counter-Revolutionaries? So, Professor, you raised questions about former President Tabon Begi's use of the terms uh, National Democratic Revolution and Counter-Revolution. But why do you still use the terms yourself? Well, I put counter-revolution in inverted commas, but I do believe uh, you can't just dismiss those terms. If you're going to say that national democratic revolution is just an ANC slogan, it's not correct, because the notion of the national refers to what type of nation we want to build, and that is open to debate. The notion of democracy is also open to debate because even in the 1980s, the UDF period threw up a different type of democracy. And in the whole of the period of apartheid rule, we also had a different type of democracy. So the word democracy is open to debate. The word revolution, a lot of people think it merely means violence. I would argue it can refer to social transformation, which is nonviolent, which is fundamental. So I don't believe you can dismiss that term. The term counter-revolution, if you have a revolution and people try to undermine the gains of the revolution by stealing from the new democracy, by state capture, by a range of other things that destroy the welfare of the people of the country. That to me is counter-revolution. But when people like Lenin wrote about counter-revolution, they talked mainly about violence attempts to overthrow the new revolutionary state. So I think that it's not a term that you can discard, although I, it's not in my daily vocabulary. You know, I don't want to call people counter-revolutionaries like I don't agree with the way Tabo and Becky was using it, but it's a legitimate term. Now, is it not a little over the top if you now refer to the ruling African National Congress as counter-revolutionary? Well, if it's correct to say that when you um, have a revolution, I think that the transition of the 1990s to a democratic state was a revolution in the sense that we had previously had minority rule just by the whites, and you then had a new democratic era where everyone could vote and a new state with a new constitution was created. But a number of things had to happen after that to realize democracy fully. In fact, democracy will never be fully realized because it's something that we can imagine growing all the time. We think of new things. Uh, with climate change, for example, it wasn't on the agenda in the 1960s. It wasn't such a big thing. And a lot of us are not sufficiently well versed in climate change. So I believe it's a growing thing. However, it may not grow. It may be set back by attacks that are made on that democracy. I believe that violence by the state and by the ANC against people who are their opponents, against the homeless who may be sleeping on the streets, against foreign nationals, uh, violence is a very serious problem. Stealing things that are meant for the poor, uh, if you look at what I quoted in my article, the nonprofit organizations in Gauteng are having their funds removed. Now, it is a shortage of funding. What happened to the funding that was stolen during COVID, which was meant for masks and things like this? Those prices were inflated massively. Has all that funding been recovered? In any case, they stole public money. Now, to me, these things are just examples with state capture and other forms of corruption of the counter-revolutionary, if you want to use that word, 
if you use it as meaning an attack on what was a revolution, in this case, now a peaceful revolution, to transform the lives of all in South Africa, that attack is coming partly from other organizations, but mainly from the ANC-led state itself. Mm, and you also say that uh, every word of the notion national and uh, democratic revolution is open to debate. Can you now explain why or just give examples? If you take the word national, who is part of the nation? Does it mean all who live in South Africa? Can people who come from other parts of Africa become part of the nation? How does the national relate to tribalism or ethnic identities. If you read some ANC documents, they refer to ethnic chauvinism. Now, if you are proud of your language and your culture, are you not allowed to be proud of that? Is that ethnic chauvinism? I think that when we're talking about customs and cultures, we must be engaging with them. We can't just just say everything that comes from the past must be honored. Ugutwala is tantamount to rape, so that it should be outlawed. But that is not the same of every other cultural legacy from the past. And some of them people are proud of and legitimately proud of them. Uh, there are lots of praise poems that have been passed on that are important parts of our heritage and it should belong to all people in South Africa. With the word democratic, I was already saying, what does the word democratic mean? Is it simply to vote every year? Or do we encourage local level democracy, different types of democracy? What If you do encourage that, what is the relationship between street committees, say, and parliamentary representatives or formal municipal representatives. So we've got to be examining how can we enrich our democracy. People are doing this with the electoral law, but my belief is that we can't say that democracy is simply voting and that every five years you vote, the rest of the time you just observe. What we had in mind when I was in the struggle was not a passive citizenry, passive population that they would be actively involved. On the word revolution, I was already suggesting it doesn't simply mean violence. Sometimes revolutions happen that are not violent, that I believe was the case in 1990s in South Africa, and it refers to what is a fundamental transformation of the conditions in the society. What previously prevailed has been turned around by the constitution Unfortunately, it's being set back a bit. So lastly, Professor, you speak of something that uh, is relevant to what is happening in our communities when you touch on the lawless attacks on the poor and callous withdrawal of funding for NGOs that serve those with disabilities. So your advice is that we show empathy and compassion. Uh, the main need is for the money. Should that be not uh, foregrounded? Let me say this. If the people who are supporting the poor don't have money, uh, they can do their best to pressurize those who have money to mm -hmm. assist, that is, the state in the first place, uh, to find the money for this, instead of spending it on flag poles or whatever they're going to spend their money on. But also pressure on business and those who are wealthier in society. Uh, I do think it's important, but I was trying to introduce into our vocabulary or reintroduce the notion of empathy, caring about the poor, compassion and passion. All of those things drive you to work to create a better life for all, as the ANC used to say, and now they believe in a better life for themselves as the uh, leadership, but not for the poor, as far as I can make out.
There was political analyst Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's Polity, discussing the column titled, What do we do when erstwhile liberators become counter-revolutionaries?